And now your hosts of In Your City Show, Kelly and Gordon. Welcome to the In Your City Show. It is November. It is the month of being thankful. It's all about gratitude. And our show is brought to you by Clayton, St. Charles, and Chesterfield City Lifestyle Magazines. We, gosh, we're so thankful. We deliver to over 40,000 homes, 3,000 plus businesses every single month, bringing these gorgeous stories. And as you can see, our covers are just beautiful. They are the Make-A-Wish Kids. These are kids who have had wishes granted um, and we're gonna find out more about them. We've got a couple great young men that are gonna be on the show with us and Taylor who comes from Make-A-Wish talking about it. So we're excited about that. And uh, of course, I've always got to bring along um, Olive with Olive. me. Oh, Olive, she's possum. I'm so excited about the new pups and can't wait till they come in. But you can actually go to oolivethebulldog.com, pre-order your very own possum bulldog pup. And then, of course, if you haven't got a copy of your Oh, Olive, Oh, Noah Thunderstorm, we would love for you to go on and um, be a great holiday gift. And I'm, you know what is so cool is like when you hear, um, like the I was at a school, um, where were we at? Academy Tuesday, Sacred Academy Heart. of Sacred Heart. And uh, Rennie Knott from Channel 5 is doing a story and he came in and the kids were just so well behaved. They were just, they were so just- Excited. Ex excited about Olive and the love that poured out of them being with Olive was just- Olive was soaking it up. Yeah, just soaking up, amazing to watch. But what was cool is, is that I got some emails later from the parents that were there, or I'm sorry, that the children that were there just, you know, so happens to be, I guess, Facebook friends and talking about um, how excited their child was. And a few of them already has a book and said that you know she had to read the book a couple times that night to them that they kept wanting to read it. And that's all you can hope is that a child will continue you know, to wanna read. It was so. really cool and kind of gave you little chills and goosebumps listening to the kids all in unison reading your book with you, you yes, know, with the yes. boom, boom. And then the yeah. best day ever, one of the little yeah, boys said that, that he awesome. had. So it was really cool. So I would say that is what I'm thankful for. And that is our question of the day is, what are we thankful for? Which I'll be asking you too, Gordon. So, you know, as we enter the season of Thanksgiving, it's a time when we naturally turn our thoughts toward the many blessings in our lives, right? Thanksgiving embodies the essence of gratitude urging us to consciously express it. It calls us to cherish moments with our loved ones and to embrace the act of giving back in a profound and meaningful way today. So, and all this month. So let's be thankful for what you are thankful for as well. So we're gonna have a great show. It's all about being thankful, gratitude, and some of the cool, cool organizations that are out there, people that are out there that are making a big difference. So. We made a big difference. We did make a big difference. We you just, know. just got back from Vegas, baby. <laughs> you never know what life's gonna bring you. I had no idea. So a friend of ours is doing the IKF, International Karaoke Federation. Who knew, cha right? World Championship. So it's not just local, it's not just in a city, it's it's worldwide. I and mean, we had people from France there. Anyway, I was- France, uh, Colombia, Jamaica. Jamaica. Uh, St. Louis was representing two people, I believe, weren't they, two? Uh, Yes. And then there was Seattle. Um, they were from all over. Yeah, it was quite a, an experience. And uh, so I got asked to be a judge uh, 30 years in the business of doing entertainment and DJing and karaoke shows and singing, singing in bands and the music industry. And it, it was great because I got to meet some interesting. Louis Barr was one of the other judges wow. from Vegas. So He's talented. a seven time world championship. Uh, um, what do they call that? The uh, dancing ballroom with the dancer. Yeah, and ballroom he was dancer, on Dancing with dancing the Stars. Dancing with the Stars. And uh, just a fascinating man. It was such a pleasure to meet him and the other judges. And uh, Very worldly. So when you meet someone that's so worldly, that's done so much in life and has met so many people, you're just like in awe you know, yeah. of them. Yeah. Yeah, he came across, I mean, he came, he looks like a movie star, looks he like does. he should be in a movie. Um, Walking down the streets of New York or France. <laughs> yeah, he's a great guy. But also we got to take in some of the sites of Vegas. Of course, they're having the Formula One race coming up on the 18th. It's uh, cool to this drive weekend. down the streets because the streets were literally, of all places, all one of the busiest yeah. you know, places you can possibly be, Vegas. These streets are just lined with fencing and we were driving down them, of course, in the Uber, where the race cars are, the Formula One Formula race is gonna be taking yeah, place. The stands so that was cool. They have a big stand right in front of the Bellagio fountains, which Kelly enjoyed. We 
that have to thank one of our great friends for Liz, setting Liz us up at Spago Restaurant, who we got a great seat right there in front of the fountains outside. And it takes your breath away. If you have ever exp never experienced it and you go to Vegas, I highly recommend just standing in front of those fountains and listening to the music play and the fountains going off. You're just mesmerized, you're taken in by it. The, the beauty was just incredible. And if you get a chance to eat at Spago, apparently it's very difficult to get in there and it's how we lucked out. It's who you know, right? It's not what you know, it's who you know to get anything. I was a little surprised at Kelly's food choice though. Go to Spago, great restaurant, and what does she order? The spaghetti. I'm, I don't know, I just, it was like calling <laughs> out to me. So it sounded to so, and it was so good. Probably the best spaghetti I had. It was, it was Usually really I good. order a filet mignon or a lobster or something like that, and it was, it was so good. Service Actually, was off the charts. We ordered yeah. a pizza for the appetizer yes, too. Yes, we did, that was good too. Which was really good, but, and then the other thing that we got to do um, was go to the Michael Jackson Cirque du Soleil. Michael Cirque. Jackson one. Yeah. Michael, yeah, it was like a Cirque du, Cirque Cirque du Soleil. Soleil, is that how you yeah. say it? And I mean, the trapeze and uh, the things that they were doing were just incredible, the timing. These, these people have to be martial arts experts. Every. They have to be dancers, they have to be gymnasts, they have to be all of those things because and above. they're flying around the air as if like we walk, you know, and I don't <laughs> walk too well. So it, it was just incredible. Okay, so the funniest or the craziest or most eerie part of it is, okay, so you go in, there's a line a mile long to get in. I mean, it's, it's sold out incredibly packed the, this couple comes up behind us and said and what did they say they, they said i told my wife we need to get there it's going to be a really long line and they're there's going to be behind us in line around, and there's going to be a woman in front of us in a black dress in a black dress with and sparkly, sparkly shoes. shoes and i exactly had a black dress on and in fact and you can see the black dress and sparkly shoes if you're on my social media because there's a picture of us after doing, because I did the red carpet interview, so it was super cool. I met so many people from different countries, different states, all wearing their own unique look. Some of them were like, Some okay, of them were very unique. Very unique, <laughs> very small maybe, and some just wow. But uh, so I got to meet a lot of people, but we went straight from doing the red carpet uh, and being at the event directly to go see Michael Jackson. But how crazy is that, that he had a, a sighting in his head that we'd be, he'd be in line behind someone in a long black dress and sparkly shoes. But the funniest part about it, there's probably what, I don't know, 500 people in the 600 right. in line. They picked about 10 people in the line <laughs> to stick their head up. We're sitting there and all of a sudden I just kind of, I'm like, oh, it's stung they, like backwards. Apparently they took pictures of us while in we're in line. line. And so while you're waiting for the show to start, you're looking on the side walls. And there's people on the tabloids. Like you think you're reading the tabloids yeah, of like, like the Inquirer. It's like the National Enquirer, but your face is on it, you know. <laughs> yeah, so it was, Man fights squirrel, yeah, you know, something Crazy stuff. Something we like look that. up and we're there and then we ended up over there and we're just like, oh my, for, I think the people behind us said, look, you're up on the wall <laughs> and what was funny is I was taking pictures of the auditorium and didn't realize till later that our picture was up on the wall so it was kind of funny it was like it no was clue. great so we had a really good we had a really good yeah. really good experience and fun. um and we hope if you go there that you'll find some great things to do we did actually try a club out nightclub my 26 year old daughter got us in a nightclub <laughs> <laughs> my cool kid got us you know on the list so we went in and let the music thump us around a little bit and then actually the nightclub was pretty it was actually really nice it was really nice because we got there before any the old people yeah we're the old people the 9 30 crowd yeah the 9 30 that leaves at 9 30 not we gets were there leaving, the line was wrapped around the building when we were there we had so much activity space because yeah. there was no like this ain't too bad <laughs> there's nobody there so if i was 21 it would have been a whole different story <laughs> yeah all right well we do have a great show ahead a lot of wonderful people that are really making a difference in our cities and uh, we'll find out who they are and what cities they're from as we come back shortly with more of in your city show Welcome back to In Your City Show. We have the beautiful Angel Magasano. She is the founder and CEO of LBB, better yet, better known as Little Black Book of Women in Business. I found this 
company or maybe Angel found me probably 10 years ago. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's funny how time goes. And over the years, you know, you just kind of keep running into each other, running, running into each other. And she was kind enough to have me speak at a luncheon. And then I just madly fell in love with the organization and can't get enough of it now. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I mean, you have built such an amazing organization and help so many women to find themselves, to have more courage and to be a better person. I mean, what what were you doing one day when all of a sudden you're like, I think I'm going to uh, <laughs> put all my energy and try to get a bunch of women together that are entrepreneurs and see what I can do. And how did this come about? Uh, well, what I was doing was I was floundering in business. I was a um, corporate marketing person who took a step out of the corporate world to be a stay-at-home mother. During that time, very I- Very important. Oh my gosh, it was the best time. So important and uh, such a great learning experience for my life. But during that time, I started a hobby business and I was a cake designer and I was- and Oh, yeah, good, let me tell you. cake, by the way. <laughs> let me tell you, I was really good at it. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's my retirement plan, okay. the more I think about it. It might be my retirement plan. But it was uh, a hobby business, and I never really saw it as a business journey, but it really was turning into that, and I was starting to get some national uh, recognition for cake, wedding cake design, and I just didn't know how to run the business side of the business. I knew how to market it, and Facebook was brand new uh, back at that time, so that was a great new tool to market this cake business, but I didn't know how to run the business. So I started to just reach out in my local network to see who was running a business, whether they were a solopreneur or they were running like a, a chiropractic firm, who can help me on the back end run this business and share their best practices with me so I can run this cake business as a business. And so that's how it started. Wow. It was you wanting to learn how to run a business. Right. I thought there's probably so many other people out there that are in the same position, right? We it was, it was, three, and it was not only that, you know, I had something to share, you know, I had a skills to share that I knew other people didn't have. And I had, I was lacking in so many skills. I knew that people could share with me and I just didn't know how to scale sure. in that way. But the other part of it was that I was also a stay at home mom. So I had all of the duties of what it was like to be a home manager. You know, I was running the home and the children and their schedules and my husband at the time, his schedule and all of the things. And right. I needed to be surrounded by women who could understand what I was going through. I'm trying to be taken seriously as a business owner not knowing what I don't know, and also still be loyal to my family. Yeah, yeah. And do, do you find that um, sometimes when, when, when we're in business, even though there's technology and everything that we might have now, there's still so much to know and to, to be able to grow your business? Yeah, I, I feel like it changes all the time. And I've been doing this now for 12 years, and there are still so many things I'm that changing. I don't know. When it comes to technology, certainly that changes quickly and having updates with that is so important. But there are still some fundamentals, I think, that um, even a 10-year veteran in business can learn. Yeah. I know Kelly takes care of all of our social media stuff, and I see her on there, it takes 10 hours a day almost <laughs> to just take care of that, and then you gotta run a business on top right. of it. It's, yeah. it's tough to do. So when you started Little Black Book, at what point, I mean, when you started it, how many years did it take before it really took off? Well, I can, here I can give you a, a, a specific um, example. It took 10 years. I spent a lot of years hustling. I spent a lot, when we first met, and God love it, it was through Streetscape Magazine, yeah. which was a lifestyle magazine mm -hmm. in St. Charles County at the time. And um, back at that time, um, I was really hustling, and I would hustle to the Chamber of Commerce. I would hustle through any any networking opportunity that there was in the area. I was there, and I networked so much. I was probably networking myself out of a job because I wasn't spending any time on the business development. But it took 10 years for me to grow the business to a place where we are operating in 10 communities. And then this year alone, 
I've been able to onboard another five communities. So it's taken me 12 months to onboard 50% of what it took me 10 years to wow. do. That's so horrible. at this point, we're really, there's recognition, there's credibility, um, there's a history where, you know, there's a proven track record. And so now our growth is really explosive. And people say, oh my gosh, this happened overnight. It didn't. Like I've cried in bed. I yeah. cried in bed Somebody for a number that. of years, right? So many people right? see everybody's successes yeah. and they think, oh wow, it's so easy for you. No, they don't see it. It's like, you That's know. That's right. They don't know. It's like the little start. It's like the little the picture of the iceberg. You see the little bitty iceberg yeah, on top of it. Yeah, it's exactly it's like just, that. Just giant it's a, thing that, you know. It's absolutely uh, true. I, I I remember you telling a story um cuz a lot of times we're so <clears throat> fearful, excuse me, of starting a business or, you know, you have to put some money into it or something like that and and I remember you telling mm -hmm. the story. She was absolutely terrified. She's telling the story about spending $100 on an employee, I think a month maybe. That's right. To take $100 out of your pay and put it towards someone else to help you was terrifying. And you 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 took that that step, you did it. And I mean, now, of course, you know, things have changed so much since then, but it, it is quite um, or scary when you it have is. to take that leap yeah. to do something, no matter how much it is, to take that out, you know? Yeah. You gotta do it. I, it that is the, the hardest $100 I ever spent, yeah. and, and also the best $100 I ever spent. Yes. But I do think when you're, um, when you come into being a business owner from a place where, like where I came from, I came from the corporate world, so I was no stranger to business, mm -hmm. but I was a stranger to running a business. Right. And so I think that's where people get frustrated because they don't, they start with maybe the marketing piece and visibility and exposure and they need to be out there and they need to you know, be seen, but they don't have the backbone of the, the bookkeeping in place, you know, which is really the financial end is really the foundation, because if you don't know where your money is coming from and where your money's going to, then it can you, just be gone. It can just be gone. <laughs> and then your passion just fizzles out and turns right. into resentment. You know what I love about your organization is the fact that from what I've seen is how you the support that you guys have. Yes. For each Supporting other. each other. Yeah, because you know, there's and I'm not cutting them down or anything, but there's chambers and stuff like that. And everybody goes to chamber meetings and do, does this and does that, but there's no after support usually. Mm -hmm. And there's so much support afterwards. Like you go to each other's events, you post each other stuff on so social media, you're there women to- Women really yeah. building women. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's an authenticity to the entire organization and the members that join it. We really do attract a different type of woman who is uh, authentic in their giving self, meaning they're ready to you know, celebrate somebody else's success and help them get there along the way. And I think that's just the emotional intelligence that women have that uh, sets is the point of difference from something like a chamber of commerce or a mixed, you know, co-ed yeah. organization. You know, women just have that bond. That I just see how much you guys add value to each other. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Well, thank you for that. So speaking of added value, um, before uh, we don't want to run out of time here to make sure because you do give back so much. And right now, there's so many events that you do throughout the year that everyone is doing for one another and having, but you have this incredible event, um, which one of the fun events coming up is the luncheon where um, your favorite thing, which is so fun, where we all bring our favorite gift and everyone, all the women. Are you bringing women, me? Uh, no, yeah, I have <laughs> well, Gordon wrapped She has a $20 and cap, so I, I don't think she. Cap, so, yeah, you know, a lot more expensive. Maybe more expensive than that. <laughs> but the other big event that we're looking forward to is the Burbash, and that's your holiday event. It are you for Toys for Tots. So how can we be involved and tell us about that event? Yeah, so Burbash mm -hmm. as a campaign is a 45 day collective um, community toy drive. So we work with, this year we're working with over 350 independent businesses to collect on behalf of the Burbash toy drive. It's, which is Fantastic. very exciting, yeah. super exciting. Um, and then those toys are all brought to the gala, which you'll be at when the Burbash Gala is happening in December. And uh, we celebrate that night. The gala is all about celebrating the community give back and support that we've been able to um, give to not only Toys for Tots, but other nonprofit organizations in the area. Uh, but the, the contribution that we have with Toys for Tots is significant. Last year, we donated 20,000 toys wow. in the greater St. That. Louis that region. Yeah. For the last three years, we have um, 
we filled a semi truck trailer. So based on the numbers, the 2000 statistics of Toys for Tots and the need that presents in the St. Louis region versus the amount of toys that they collect, without our contribution, they would not be able to fill the need. Wow. So it is so important for people to give that toy because toys uh, to children represent imaginative, pl imaginative play and creative critical thinking skills. So uh, it's just such an, it's an it's an important piece in their development. Well, thank you so much for all that you do. If someone is interested in being part of the Little Black Book of Women in Business, how do they go about doing that besides the people I introduce you by email? <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, if you know Kelly, ask <laughs> her. Uh, for her everybody else. <laughs> that's right. I won't give out your phone number. Uh, anybody else, we have online presence at womenoflbb.com. We also have social media pres uh, presence on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook, so you can find us just about anywhere. And how how many women are in the organization? 520. Wow, wow. that's yeah. incredible. That's a lot of women and a great group of women to be around. So Angel Magasano, thank you so much, president and CEO, founder of LBB, Little Black Book of Women in Business. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
So I am 18. You're 18. How old were you when you had a wish? So I was 11 years old whenever I first had my, whenever I got my wish, and that was to train at the U.S. men's national soccer team. Oh, wow. And uh, it was kind of a super cool experience because not only did my wish get to be granted, but it also got to happen here at Bush Stadium. So growing up, growing up in St. Louis, growing up a huge Cardinals fan, I also got like a full backstage, uh, backstage tour of Bush Stadium, got to go inside the locker room, got to eat with the team ride around St. Louis on the bus with them all. And it was just like one of the greatest moments of my entire life. Who's your favorite? Do you have a favorite soccer team or favorite player? Um, So favorite MLS team, obviously, is St. Louis City. But uh, growing up, big soccer fan. I'm a fan of uh, Manchester. My whole family is a Manchester United family in the, in the Premier League. So kind you're of just, just watching the story Beckham yes. <laughs> and seeing him do that phenomenal kick. Yeah, yeah. incredible. Oh, yeah, me and my whole family, me, my mom, uh, my younger brother, my older brother, my dad, we all sat down. We watched the whole documentary all in one go. Are you playing soccer? Uh, I'm not anymore. But you love it. I love it. You yeah. get to enjoy it. Yep. So uh, what what was it? What was an experience like, you know, having your dream come true? Yeah. So it was just like it kind of felt like a dream at first because, like I said, like St. Louis kid born and raised and I'm just in my hotel room. And then here I see Tim Ream come come into like the lobby who I actually went to St. Dominic High School, the same high school that he graduated from. So having him like come down to the lobby and be like, hey, like Luke, like your wish is happening this weekend was just like, I was just over, me and my entire family were overcome with emotion. Oh, I can only imagine. That's so special. I mm -hmm. love hearing that. And Cooper, how old are you? I'm Cooper, I'm 15. Uh, my wish was to go to like all the theme parks in Orlando, Florida. All of the theme parks? <laughs> uh, there you go, way to go. If you're gonna do it, go big, right? Yeah. And so you wish to go to Disney World and then and see all of the theme parks. So what did you get to experience there? It was real cool. So we went there and like normally you can get like the fast passes, but I got this thing, it was like a gold pass. And it's where they would like take you up through the back of the line. And like you gotta skip and just go first. You got some royal treatment, is what you got. <laughs> yeah. See, you, pardon me. Excuse me, pardon me. I'm, I'm that had a, to be great. I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> and how old were you when you got to go? I think I was like 13. 13. Yeah. So about that, you're you're 15 right now. Yeah. So I was, not not actually that, I was 14. I'm sorry. 14. So not that long ago that you got to go then. Not at all. So what kind of experience besides getting to pass everyone up in line, <laughs> which is the best thing of all, um, what what was it like for you getting to go there and experience you know a dream? Uh well I got to do like all the rides in one day. It was just really fun. Do you have a favorite ride? One of the Harry Potter ones. Really? I did I have cool. not got to see that. It no, Harry Potter since, wasn't there so yeah. when I went. I think uh, going in the a Haunted Mansion, that was I cool. thought that was so much fun. It's when you look in the mirror and the ghost is sitting next to you. And did you do that? <laughs> you yeah. didn't write, tell me you didn't write the Tower of Terror. I did. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's absolutely terrifying. <laughs> it's like, am I still up here? I'm not, I don't know. I remember if taking my daughter on that. All of a sudden it just dropped. All I saw was her ponytail go up. <laughs> <laughs> You're hoping that they're still in the seat with you, right? Uh, did you, and did you get to go with your whole family? Was it your mom and dad and just you? Yeah, it was. Your, your whole family got to go? No, I also got to build a lightsaber, like the Disney one. You did, oh, you, you awesome. got the lightsaber? I got to build one. So you they have like a one. thing where you can build your own. You still have it? Oh, uh, yeah, I do. Now, do you keep that in a, in a safe spot or do you swing it around? <laughs> I keep it in a safe spot. It's like it safe propped spot. up on like a holder. Yeah. Awesome. And how are you both doing? You're just completely inspired. And did it just give you a whole new awakening experience in something like this? Yeah. So um, so my biggest thing about Make-A-Wish is obviously it was amazing for kids like me and Cooper to experience something like that. But something that I feel like goes very overlooked is um, is the family aspect of it all. Because I'm one of four boys, like I'm super close with all three of my brothers. And um, there's a lot of like behind the scenes battles that the family has to go through when you're going yeah. through like cancer treatment that a lot of people don't think about. And um, being able to see like my younger brother go out and kick the soccer ball with the guys, like just how I was doing. And um, my older brother who ended up playing college soccer, he kind of got to like, talk to the head coach at the time and he kind of got to like, pick his brain and like talk about soccer and like bounce some ideas back and forth. So really um, that make wish also is giving back to their fit to the families just as much as they are as us is something that I think is amazing. Yeah. Now, it, um, 
Luke, are you involved with something that we want to make sure we get that before yeah. we end? Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so um, so whenever I was going through my treatment, I got the opportunity to uh, uh, be like the honorary team captain with the CBC basketball team where my older brothers went. And uh, Coach Tatum, who is the our varsity coach there at the time, he kind of took me underneath his wing and I got to I got to do a lot of amazing stuff with that team. So um, whenever I was younger, I had the idea that I wanted to give back uh, to the community and I wanted to kind of highlight St. Louis and Missouri basketball as a whole. So two years ago was our first annual I Got This All-Star Game, which I got this was kind of the phrase that my family used during my treatment plan. And we had two all-star teams and each one of the teams uh, had what we called a wish kid captain, which kind of touched back on whenever I got to be the captain of that basketball team. And Cooper was actually uh, one of the one of the original wish kid captains of the teams. Oh, I love it. And uh, before, excuse me, before tip off, uh, the past two years we've done on average uh, a little over twenty thousand dollars. Oh wow. my gosh! Kudos to you and to you for getting in there and being that helper as well. That's amazing. Yeah. And that is what's so important um, is. First of all, volunteers. Mm -hmm. You can't yeah. have enough volunteers when you have an organization. Having people that support, because because of people supporting, because of people giving back, you two, amongst many other kids, have had the experience of being inspired by a wish come true. And we need that. Absolutely. I mean, wishes are not possible without our community members, without companies, individuals, people who are giving back proceeds from their children's book or wishing it forward after their wish experience. Um, wishes are not possible without you and our community. And that's what we need right now with a record number of wishes right, waiting with those 650 kiddos. So um, now is the time to get involved if you're if you're feeling called, if your heart, if that's on your heart. Um, with Giving Tuesday coming up with Season of Wishes, we just really encourage you and the community to um, spread some love and joy this holiday season and help make wishes come true because as you can see wishes have a lasting impact yeah. you're not just making a one-time um, wish you are truly changing the lives of the kiddos and their families for the rest of their lives were you two this handsome before you wish because <laughs> you guys are handsome young men there aren't they yep. <laughs> well thank you so much for coming and telling your story and your wish we appreciate it and we wish you to have the best holiday season and thank you for both for being here and thank you Taylor. We thank you. It. Thank you. So yeah. we've got Cooper and Luke, amazing, handsome, young uh, Make-A-Wish kids and then of course Taylor Raymer here, the Director of Business and Development with the Make-A-Wish Foundation of Missouri and Kansas. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. In Your City Show is back and we are bringing you St. Louis Crisis Nursery, another organization to be very thankful for. And with us is the CEO, Diane Miller. Hi. Hi so good to see you again. Me. Remember you on the podcast you. with us over at Prosinos. Yes, that was so fun. Yeah. You guys made it so easy. That was a uh, celebrity, celebrity host night or mm -hmm. what was it called? Celebrity yes. waiter night. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So yes. much fun. So yeah. we, this was the first year that we were not able to be there. Mm. We were out of town. So we I'm so sorry you. that we, we missed you be in there but that's always a great event you have yeah. so much that you do and you know this this is what our show is all about is gratitude and being thankful and mm -hmm. there's so many people out there that are making a difference mm -hmm. in people's lives and you are mm -hmm. definitely one of those along with your team yes. and all the incredible volunteers that make everything happen we just recently mm -hmm. had the big um uh Tots. Um, over the top. Over the top. For Tots. For tots. Yes. And uh, that was at Ameristar. And of yes. course, I've been to that every yes. year. And this year I had to miss two because mm -hmm. we had a, an event we had to be at out of town. But uh, my friends went and had such a great time. You have just endless booths of shopping, which mm -hmm. what woman doesn't want to do that? Right. And a few men that get drug along <laughs> yeah. by their spouses or partners. And uh, and then, of course, uh, who was the MC this year? Claire Kellett. Claire, I love Board. Claire. She's yes. awesome. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, a wonderful lunch, all mm -hmm. raising money. How much money did you raise this year? Do you have that total? Record year, $180,000 wow. at a luncheon. So it, it, the women, Fi over 500 women this year, over 500. Incredible. Um, it was sold out in August. Gosh, and that's... people are already buying tables. Wine for and the... shopping, and then yes, yes, oh can you go wrong <laughs> there? Go wrong, <laughs> right? How much can I pay you? Uh, just weren't there to say stop. <laughs> yes. yeah. And for the first time ever, we had 
um, she's an adult now, but she was a kid at the crisis nursery. Aww. And she came, um, Brittany is her name, and she came and told her story oh of gosh. what she remembered um, when her mom was struggling and couldn't take care of she and her siblings. They would come to the crisis nursery. And the things that she remembered were the warm bath because they didn't have hot water in their wow. house, food to eat all day long, three meals, three snacks. They didn't have any food in their home. Mm. And I then she remembered, you'll, you'll get a kick out of this, that when she was getting dressed in the morning, the staff brought out some outfits for her to pick and it still had the tags on. And oh. she never forgot that it was wow. brand new clothing. So many things that we take for granted are you just are an right. incredible blessing for someone else that we just take those things for granted, hot water, right. you know. Oh my gosh, food. 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 I, I have a hard time, but you know, I'll tell you, when we don't finish our meal and and it's stuff that you know you really can't keep and I, it makes me ill putting it in the trash can. Yes. I, I just absolutely, uh, we were having to go visit his mom and mm -hmm. I had a thing of mustacholi and and it would it took time to take it to my daughter's mm -hmm. and he's like oh no we'll drop it off we don't want to go bad but uh, right. you know you don't want to good, waste something you that's you know you. that so good many people yeah. it's such a, a, yes. a valuable commodity that they aren't able to have so diane for those that you know may not know what the st louis crisis nursery is all about please tell us sure so the Crisis Nursery is a child abuse prevention agency that's been around in our community for over 37 years. So we started at what was Deaconess Hospital, it used to be across from the zoo, and um, helping families that have nowhere else to go and they have little ones. So it's any kind of a crisis, domestic violence, overwhelming parental stress, homelessness. We, we work with families that are evicted and they end up sleeping in their cars. Mm. Um, we work with moms who are in bad situations and maybe being beaten every day. And then one day she decides, I'm not gonna take it anymore and um, calls the police or asks for help. And the kids come to us and mom can go to one of the domestic violence shelters. Gosh. We work really closely with the hospitals. So if you just imagine that, most of our parents are single parent moms living in poverty trying to do the very best that they can. They are my heroes Hi. at how, how hard they are working. And so 24 hours a day, seven days a week, they can call any one of our now five nurseries. So we're all the way out to Wentzville, we're up in North County, we're in St. Charles, and then down in the city of St. Louis. Trained professionals will answer the phone and they'll know exactly what to do. And about 60% of the parents that call just need somebody to talk to mm -hmm. and most of our calls are in the middle of the night and they're on the weekends when other agencies have closed and gone home we're still at work we're hard at work kids come in then um, within the first 24 hours they get a complete physical 32 percent of our kids are ill when they come and that might be why the baby is crying all night sure. and mom can't get get her um, to be consoled and um, mom might start to think I'm a bad mom and I can't do this, I can't take care of her. And, and we actually had a mother that thought about putting her baby in the bathtub and mm. drowning her. And then she remembered that when she was at the laundromat, she saw a poster that said, parenting is hard, mm. call the crisis nursery. It's hard when you have everything. It is, isn't so it? It's it is. like there's no hope in sight. Exactly, right. nobody to help her, no family, no neighbors, no one at all. At two o'clock in the morning, she called the crisis nursery and Katie is alive today because oh, she made goodness. that phone call. And wow. so when people think of us, that's what I want them to think of. We literally are saving lives. So help, helping kids get the prescriptions that they need, get to feel better, giving the parent a little break Sometimes mm -hmm. you just need 24 hours. And my uh, daughter throws them out of the car. She drives by. Yeah. She needs a break. <laughs> Take them. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. So because she is, has somebody that she yes, can do that too. Exactly so someone right. that doesn't have anybody to go. Yes, Take, them. Take them. So we can be that auntie, that grandma. But then, in addition to that. In addition to the physicals, we also provide a therapeutic environment because of the trauma that our kids are sure. experiencing when you live in that kind of poverty and the violence that's going on in our city. So many years ago, over 25 years ago, we started doing art therapy. And um, we have trained, licensed art therapists that travel between the nurseries. And they'll talk with the kids about how they're feeling. And then, because that's not the way to communicate with kids, 
they bring out the crayons and the, the clay and, and show me, show me how you're feeling. And so actually today I brought you one of those. I, I wanted that. to leave that here with you guys. But this is some of the art that um, one with of our- love and gratitude from the St. Louis Crisis Nursery. Yes, made by one and of one our- of the children's made. One of our little ones. And we wanted to give that to you. Oh, thank and you. And this was a, a message of hope. That's this lovely. little one was feeling like maybe the sun would come out again. And, the sun uh, would come out again. The sun. And that, and, and I love that because that's my whole model behind my children's book is that oh, this, through the stormiest times, yes. the sun will always come out and yes. it forms a rainbow as well, it, you yes. know, that you can see with all the color. So how <laughs> lovely that is. It's so true that the sun will always come out just like the young, the mother that yes. had thought that awful yeah. thought mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. her child that, you know, luckily she made that call because the next day will happen if you allow it. There, there can be somebody exactly there to help you. Right, if you, don't you know, I just realized I can, I remember when your organization, that's how old I am, mm -hmm. 37 years ago, mm -hmm. you were just starting and I had you as I did a, a, a bridal fashion show mm -hmm. at Mid Rivers Mall <gasps> and you were my, uh, yeah. my um, uh, organization mm -hmm. that had a booth and we mm -hmm. raised money out of the, you know, the. Uh, they paid for a booth yes. and, and then people of course donated and we had everybody bring diapers or toilet mm -hmm. paper and whatever mm -hmm. necessities formula so we had barrels of things at the your booth table where yes. people could drop things off and that was 37 years Isn't ago that incredible? I thought about you when you said 37 years ago <laughs> we, I was one of the first events like getting out there it was only maybe a couple people there was Damn. it was not a big crew <laughs> whatsoever but you know someone had the the want to start this and it's exactly. just so valuable everything you do and again mm -hmm. just like when we talked about with the other organization volunteers are everything yes. and on a day-to-day -day basis it's not just about the luncheon that you had and the other event that you're mm -hmm. going to talk about right now mm -hmm. but it's the day-to-day -day of people dropping off diapers or mm -hmm. formula those mm -hmm. things that are such necessities to to parents to be able to take care of their child. We can do that every day, all year long, right? Or yes. write a check. Yes, any of those things would be so helpful. We have moms that are using, reusing disposable diapers mm. because they can't afford it. We have parents that are watering down formula because they can't afford formula. So any help that we can get, um, people can go to our website, crisisnurserykids.org and um, learn more about us and all of our, because in addition to the five nurseries, we also have 11 empowerment centers. Is that a place where we can drop off that things? That you can drop things off. Okay. And um, that's where the social workers are that are doing the aftercare follow-up program. So care for the kids. And then when they leave, we don't give up. We don't quit. We keep going and we go into their homes and they come to us and they, we have food banks, diaper banks, legal clinics, free libraries. Uh -huh. We have a clothing boutique in, this, in St. Louis City. Oh. We, Got all those clothes downstairs. I'll be, I'll be bringing <laughs> we them to love you. Your so, clothes. yeah, oh, we, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> I've, got, I've got tubs downstairs. So I will, I yes. will definitely bring them yeah. your way. I, I didn't, I did know that we could yeah, do that as well. We're full service. To anything so that parents, we become we aware of, as well, that our parents need, we we try to jump in. And so that leads to the holidays that yes. are coming up. And many years ago, we started a program called Holiday Hearts. And w because what we found is in January, kids were coming in. To the nursery and we would say how was your Christmas they would say we didn't have Christmas Santa forgot us or we yeah. must have been bad and so we didn't get any toys and we said that's unacceptable Santa does not think you're bad and he will never forget you again and so each year now it's about 1600 kids that we help over the holidays and do that we do that a number of different ways again that's on the website but um, in addition to toys we do gift cards like to Walmart or to Aldi's so the parent can go buy what they want and you know what the number one thing is that parents ask for right. they ask for food mm. because of the inflation and how expensive oh food gosh, is you know isn't it terrible yeah and so if you have two or three kids and you're working a minimum wage job and you're paying for daycare and um, food just becomes... I don't see how they do it. I, it's really a struggle. It really is. And do you also help the parents with um, uh, getting enrolled to ha get help with food stamps or things like that yes. as well? There are mm -hmm. things to help them with that? Yes, but we sure do. We do that. And um, But at all 16 locations, we have food um, pantries so that if somebody shows up at our door and they're hungry, we don't have to say, go here, go there, you fill out this paperwork. Set. We say, here. 
Great. We want to help. Well, before we, which we, we have run out of time, but we, we do <laughs> not want to leave. Can you please let us know about your upcoming um, events that yes. you do? Yeah, so this one um, that is coming, is going on right now, actually. Okay. It's called Holiday Hearts, and it's anybody that wants to help make sure that kids have a magical Christmas, and they can either um, go online and make a donation, they can go to, we like Walmart, they're very supportive of the nursery, Aldi's is supportive of us, buy some gift cards and either mail them to us, drop them off, and then we're gonna be having holiday parties and celebrations with the families that we work with, and we will make sure that those gift cards go directly to the families, and any donations we get, we're gonna to use to pay rent, and we pay the landlord directly. Um, a lot of families are in danger of being evicted, and we also help with utilities. Gosh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank Amazing. you for all you do. Yes, Appreciate you. it so much, Diane. So Diane is the CEO of the St. Louis Crisis Nursery. You can help crisisnursery.com? Yes. Okay. <laughs> dot org. <laughs> dot org, dot org. Yes, dot org. absolutely. It's an organization. Yeah. And be able to support, whether it's volunteers, dropping items off, being a part of the event, maybe having an event, whatever it may be, everything is valuable to these children and to the parents. So thank you so much, Diane Miller. We appreciate you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Both. Thank you. We are back with In Your City show and we have Sarah Gedalia, and I've just learned how to say her name properly, and great. it sounds so much better than the way I've been doing it. So I just keep going, Gedalia. She's the CEO and founder of Top Notch Brands, and this woman right here is a dynamo, a little Spitfire, but I call her Sunshine because when she Aww. walks in, she's just like a ray of sunshine wow, the that two comes of you in. Together, that's a lot of sunshine. <laughs> Thank you. You are. You no, are. you are. You know, no, you're all of oh, They did this earlier. No, you. We're no. going to do this the whole segment. You know, it's so, we should have set our alarm. When we had, when we met, because we would have never stopped talking. We were that's that's probably a good through. thing with Kel. Yeah, you, but I told him that you taught me a new thing because it's such a great idea. Because you can just go on and on and on, and before you know it, you're late to your next meeting or what you have to do. So yeah. you gave me a little and, nugget to take with me to kind of yes. keep myself at bay. And it's good to pick up your kids. I heard that's a good thing to do as a yeah, mother. Yeah, tonight. <laughs> yeah, tonight. That, that, that little thing in the rain. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, well, it's welcome to, to the here. show. So, tell us what Top Notch Brands are about. I mean, yeah. I know what you're about, and you are taking companies to another level. Mm, so, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so Top Notch Brand Company, we're a full service creative agency. We're just really focused on encouraging, inspiring, and improving the world. So everything we talk about is to shine light and to shine a spotlight on brands that are doing that, that are inspiring, encouraging, improving the world. So like getting to connect with you all is perfect because that's what you're doing. The guests that you guys have on that you're encouraging and you're getting their name out so that they can you know, raise support for the amazing organizations they are. So that's kind of what I do. We do um, full campaigns you know, from ideation all the way through execution. So you know, lots of marketing, lots of PR, lots of uh, big events. And so that kind of comes out of, um, I've been running agencies for about 10 years now that I've started and, um, but have been in, you know, TV and marketing for almost 20, 24 years. Weren't you I was just gonna ask how point? you got started. Oh, I wasn't yeah. quite an anchor, but I started at an ABC station mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna tell anybody what I made, but you know, do not despise <laughs> humble beginnings. <laughs> You know, and so, and then I also worked in radio, you know, for some big, some big stations and um, worked for Warner Brothers and really enjoyed, you know, enjoyed doing that. I moved from the talent side onto the producer side. I just really loved the creative aspect, was helping create a reality show when that was new, okay. like back in the day. And um, there was just a point in my life where I thought, you know what, I want to be part of you know, marketing the most inspiring thing that I possibly can. And I ended up moving into uh, international Christian media. And so I've really focused in on that area, kind of Christian ministries and organizations or businesses that have that positive message, like Good News Brewing, for example. Um, so I have been in that particular space for probably since 2005. So, um, so yeah, that's what a great what space to be in. While your husband, he was a mm -hmm. uh, uh, band. A yes. Singer, uh, did he play the guitar and sing? What did he? So do? he, yeah. So, so I so met. You two got to meet. 
Yeah, I met him in college. I met him at Campus Fellowship. He was the hot drummer. Hot drummer. Um, and I got him because he was younger than me. All the girls were going for him, but I was two years older, so I had an Work edge. for the older woman. Yes, and I also bought a cat. I didn't like cats, but I bought a cat because okay, I had an weird. apartment. He had the dorms, and I knew this man that was like a caveman and wouldn't talk would actually talk and ask me out if he could come over and see a cat. Oh and so we're gosh, married. 21 a, years later, it she worked. She doesn't like cats, but she got a cat, got to, a cat to get just, her man. I did. Wow. My husband, or my, my son, my 14 year old son, says I have Riz. <laughs> So there you go. So anyways, but Justin Eddie is Murphy a drummer. Eddie Murphy says to put a pot on the, the isn't it? The, Chris, no, Chris Rock, Rock says put a pot on the put stove. Put a pot on the stove and a, and a man, a man will be knocking at your door in two minutes. But she doesn't case, want me to cook. He doesn't want me to cook. a cat. <laughs> so, but he is. He's a drummer and he's with a group called Stickyard. You take out the C. And they tour. They play for, you know, he plays for 30,000 people. He's played with, wow. you know, um, fun Charlie Daniels, you know, Martina McBride, yeah, Grand Ole awesome. Opry up through um, being down at mega churches. So he he tours quite a bit and Fantastic. he's very talented. Yes, yeah. uh, it sounds like it. you both are very talented. And one of the events that I just had the privilege of being able to go to, thank you to you. Um, and you also wrote the story that um, it's in this magazine, isn't yes. it? The Thankful Edition. So. Um, the Rooted Sisters. Yes. So you're part of this, and here is um, uh, and the story. Cindy. Lisa Nichols and and Cindy. Um, this is an organization that started. Did it start when 2020, or so has it been going for a while? It's been going on for a while, probably eight years. And so let me tell you, and they Sarah were, wrote this story. Well, I was honored that you included me. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> so Cindy and Lisa, they are just like two awesome CEOs, female CEOs. They met in a CEO forum for, um, yeah, just female CEOs. And they both found out that they, you know, shared the same faith. And so they said, hey, we want to start, you know, we want to start attending a CEO forum for Christian women. Well, they couldn't find one. And so eight years ago, they said, well, then let's make one because these are two high powered women. Lisa owns Technology Partners. Uh, Cindy was running American Red Cross. And so eight years ago, they started it. And it is just an amazing organization. It focuses on, first of all, just creating a network and a community for women in business where they can study the word of God, which is the Bible. They can grow in their faith and then they can, you know, be in connection with one another, which helps them be the kind of leaders that right. they were created to be. And so there's uh, Bible studies twice a month. We have hubs all over St. Louis. And then we have people joining us, female leaders joining us online from all over the world. And then um, what we got to attend last week is we have two annual events, really big events that are super cool. Last week we had uh, Christian Business Women's Breakfast. That was the sixth annual Christian Business Women's Breakfast. And we had so um, 700 women. Yeah, yeah, it was like, it was Incredible. so much fun. And we had, um, so Emily Chang, who, you Can know, was the former. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I have about. her book, I'm reading her book. I'm the halfway through room. it right now. The Spare Room, I was telling them yeah. all about The Spare Room. Yes. But you know, finding, it was all about finding your talent. Yes. And you know, what is that hidden talent? And, and it was just like, um, what a uh, Steve Harvey, there was, he pulled him. up a video right after that event and it was it talking about, up on my phone, yeah, yeah, and he's, he's talking about, I don't care if it's uh, art, if it's collecting trash, if it's whatever it is, we all have a talent, yes. you know, that God's given and us. Do your talent so when you wake up in the morning, you enjoy getting yeah. up because it's you what you want it. to It's not work. He said yeah. it's not work, right? Right. And, and Emily was, Emily was amazing and just, she, she really, as so much resonated and just, you know, fell on your heart and made you think about things. And we've been talking a lot since that, you know, of following our heart and what, what is that, you know? Yes. Um, yes. It, it won't pay the bills right now exactly, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, when we obey him though, he finds a way to. You know what, that's sure so good. true, because you talked about, you just said about Lisa Nichols and talking about how they wanted to find a way that they could take the greatness that God has given them. And I love Les Brown talks about that. He says, we're yeah. all been, God has instilled greatness within each and every single one of us. Yes. And it's for us, uh, up to us to find that and use that potential, mm -hmm. you know? So I love that because it's, it's just. It's stewardship, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, like just like we would steward money or resources, I feel like the talents God's given us and woven into us is the He didn't the create us to not do anything. Right, why are we here right. if we're exactly. just being lazy yeah. and complacent, <laughs> you know? And sometimes I have to remind myself of that. Get yeah. out, go do something, Right. you know, use your talents for God because we really won't be settled until we do. At least right. that's what I believe. And so I look at you all, I'm sitting over there as you're doing your last segment and I'm like, wow, look what God did. This crisis nursery is gonna get support now and more women are gonna be helped. Yep. 
because awesome. you're giving him your talent. And so it just really inspires me. And so Lisa introduced us. And, yes. and from the moment I met you over the phone, it was like, whoa, oh, yeah. we're like sisters already. It's just like, the coolest No, you thing. are. No, you are. Uh, yeah, exactly. I was like, oh, you could be a, a rooted brother. It was, a, it was, and actually that's what he is. That's his, something's calling him I am more of a chick sometimes. Something. Yeah, yeah he fit right, he fit right in. in. But I, I did get to, you know, Liz, I went to her house afterwards. And yes. um, there were just, I told him, I said, I had a lot to do that day but something told me that I needed to keep surrounding myself with brilliant women mm. that would, you know, positively impact my day, maybe the rest of my life. So um, mm. I'm glad that I did. And, you know, it's just been a blessing meeting you. So if someone's out there that has a mission um, where they're looking to elevate their brand right. um, and create um, the positivity and the productivity that you can add to what they do, what would they need to do? Sure. Well, first of all, I'll say one last thing. Yes. They no, should go. <laughs> I'll go on. No. The root of yeah, He gave us have... the fingers. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's the fingers. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I think um, the easiest thing you could probably do is just go to Instagram and go to Top Notch Brand Company. Um, and then also go to the Rooted Sisters official on Instagram or the rootedsisters.com to get, yeah, to get connected, to be inspired. And so, um, it's it's been a blessing to be here with you. Thank you for inviting Aww. me. Oh, you're just a, Appreciate I, you. I just call her a ray of sunshine. Yeah. You just you bring sunshine <laughs> to everything you do. Thank, Thank you. you for coming here. Thank you for Thank introducing you. me to the Rooted Sisters. I look forward to all that I'll be able to do with that. And yes. then you know your company, seeing what you're doing and and elevating brands the way you do is just incredible. And we are so thankful for you Thank and you. all that you do for our cities, our communities. Um, we really want people to reach out, find out more about the Rooted Sisters if it resonates with their soul and then of course Top Notch Brand Company is absolutely incredible at elevating brands. So thank you so much for being here. If you want to find out more about Sarah Godalian, please, she is the CEO and founder of Top Notch Brands. Topnotchbrandscompany.com is where you can go and find out all that you need. And then of course look up Rooted Sisters. You can check out her Instagram. And the minute you do, you'll know why we love her so much because you just thank you. Burst energy and I love you guys. This is great. <laughs> no, wait, I so love good you. To be here. Do the sunshine. We'll dance. Do the sunshine. <laughs> Have a great day. <laughs> thank you so much. In your city show right now again all about gratitude all about being thankful we have margo sutter she is the owner and the founder of equus ranch and equus ranch is a horse rescue rehabilitation a rehabilitation outreach and you're here with us today we have a lovely story talking about your ranch and it's just fascinating all that you do and the love that you have for horses and you know there we keep meeting all these people and there's just so many things out there that need our support and need our help and you were bitten by the horse bug at a very young age and now you're bringing it back full circle to help those furry animals that are huge beasts with so much love and affection so tell us a little bit about your find to to end up here where you are loving and taking care of these horses. Well, thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Gordon, for inviting me today. Absolutely. I actually started as a kid loving Secretariat, like most people did. It's 50 year anniversary for Secretariat oh, really? of his win for the Triple Crown wow. and the Breeders' Cup. Wow. And I didn't so know there's that. a lot of lot of festivities this year around Secretariat. So I always blame him for giving me the racing bug, <laughs> you know, when I was 13 years old and, and also starting to find out more about the thoroughbred breed. They're extremely intelligent. Oh. Now, people think that they're, you know, fire breathing dragons because I see them come out and they're they're professional athletes. How many times do you walk up to a professional football player moments before he walks out on the field and expect him to say, oh, hi, everybody. <laughs> yeah. It's great. No, they're like Focus. they're in, in yeah. the zone. They're they're professional athletes. And so I'm like, well, what happens to them? That's like us before our show. Yeah. yeah. In the zone. <laughs> the game face. Got the <laughs> game face on. <laughs> that's, a, that's, what I, that's how I take the approach when I'm cleaning a stall. Ready, go. Don't bother Boy, me. Oh, I cleaned many a stalls growing up. Woo. <laughs> that's good stuff. Har that harvesting. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I was like, well, what happens to them? And so I got involved in racing. I loved the sport. And I started seeing some things that were going on behind the scenes. And sometimes horses that are too slow, are injured or whatever, disappear. Hmm. Um, they don't make it. They didn't make the cut. Now, where do they disappear to? 
And that's the hardest part to understand. Yeah. A lot of times, sometimes they direct ship to slaughter. Uh, sometimes, so that way nobody understands or knows that the animal just disappears. Mm. Sometimes they have a stop gap through an auction and then they end up in a kill pen. That could be in Stroud, Oklahoma. That could be in Pritikin, Louisiana. That could be in Colorado. It could be here in Jonesburg, Missouri. So that's the ugly part about it. What we do in our network of incredible rescue people in the equine industry, we network together, collaborate together. We have a wonderful posse of almost all women that work across the United States and find out these horses that are falling through the cracks. And we pull them out and we, we speak for them. So if Equus Rescue and Therapy says, okay, we'll speak for those five horses, that means game on. The women go together. How much do we need to raise? How much can we raise? How much can the outside parties raise to pay the bail money? First of all, you have to pay the blood money to get the horse out. Mm. Then you have to quarantine for a month, which they is five hundred dollars. You've got to pay to get it. Yeah. And so there's always a minimum fee. To, it's not like they are not free. And so, and then there's a quarantine fee for 30 days before they can ship in, unless you have a quarantine barn, which we're fortunate enough to have at Equus, and then um, transportation. So how much does it cost to bring, you know, how much did it cost to bring Ginger in from uh, Texas last year, the little two-year-old quarter horse that you, you got to see? Mm -hmm. uh, that was $1,800, just transportation to bring mm. her in. Wow. So. And her bail was like one thousand two hundred dollars. Bail, like they're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, they, they, we bail them yeah, out. Yeah, three thousand dollars right off the bat. Right, three yeah. grand before they even come in the door, and then people Goodness. were like, "What's an adoption fee?" And we say, "Well, two. Well, why two thousand? We have to keep them out of the slaughter price for an yeah. adoption fee. We also do follow up after horses are adopted sure. out. We've had tons of success stories. So all you people out there that have an Equus horse, you're doing great. We're grateful for you. Those homes are incredible, those horses are loved, and we could probably take you to about anybody's house right now that adopted one, and you would go say, oh, another success story. Oh, that's you know, wonderful. This one ended up doing another sport, this one ended up being a pet, this one ended up being a therapy horse. Yeah. But we also had an older population of horses, of 22 plus year olds that were injured and had been at the farm, and they fall through, you know, again, kind of fall through the cracks. Yeah. What do you do with them besides let them they burn the grass, burn, you know, hay burners, as my dad would call them. And they have such a ginormous energy field around them that is God-given. Their heartbeat is so phenomenal. They can feel us coming one mile away. They can feel wow. our hearts four feet away. They can see us. They're the only mammal that has 360-degree eyes. And they see best at night. So they have really great night vision. So they are a prey animal. Dogs are predators, horses are prey. So they have to be on high alert at all times because we're one of their predators, man mm -hmm. is. Yet they somehow have given us that big heart and grace and kindness to allow us to be part of their life. I'm always amazed. Yeah. That's, Always amazed. That's incredible. I used to love when my horse would know, I mean, I could whistle and he could be 10 acres back and he'd come running, you know, and Absolutely. he was just such a, a gentle horse, so intelligent and um, used to drive. I'd grab onto his mane and just, you know, take off down the field. There's no fear when I was little. Of course, no. I'd have it probably now, but they really are. They're great animals. How many acres do you have there at Equus Ranch? 77. Wow. Yeah, it was 77 acres, 114 stalls. We're very blessed. Um, Tom Spalding and the Inga Simple Trust own our farm, and it's in Millstock. It's it's a beautiful place. We have one barn has 42 stalls and a 150 by 300 foot indoor arena, so we can operate 365 days a year, and we operate 100% off of volunteer help. None of us get paid. Yeah, volunteers are so important. It's very important to all. What kind of volunteers do you look for? We look for people that are compassionate and passionate and love animals, must love animals, and especially they don't have to have horse experience. We teach a lot of people that have always had a dream about spending time with a horse, about how to lead and how to uh, like bring them in and out of the stall, pick their feet up, groom them, know if they're ill, how to give medicine and things like that. It's so, very therapeutic and really can help uh, a lot of teens and, and older people um, with 
problems that they may have dealing with the horses and that it's an incredible, powerful tool. Yes, and the one thing about a horse that is different than any other animal is they see through us. We can't hide from them. No. They are, are that powerful. Their vibration is that powerful. The medical can community, sense our fear. yeah, and the medical community understands now the power of equine therapy is because of the energy field and heartbeat that this animal is able to get past anything emotional that we are blocked to each other about. So you can tell me you're fine. I'll say, oh, good. <laughs> yeah, how are you doing? Oh, okay, great. Great to hear that. Yeah, how are you, Margo? Fine. Maybe inside I'm totally broken glass. Right. And I can't say a word to anyone or terrified of something. And I can walk by that horse and he'll grab me by the sleeve and like, hey, let's have a talk. <laughs> I you. know something's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, the words "I'm fine" though is a sure thing that something's wrong. <laughs> fine. Fine. Women, yeah. if you say that's "I'm my, fine," that's my trigger word. I know she's not. She's not right. You know, we watched a movie about uh, some inmates oh, yeah. and the horses, and it's a true story. It's called The Prisoner, I think. Yeah, maybe. and mm -hmm. and how they bonded, and they could tell that there was something broken about the inmates. Yes, but it was just a, a beautiful story. It, yeah. They are, and and what I always say is that they open the portals of our heart and soul that we have closed off to others. And so the mental health community understands that equine therapy can do in 15 minutes what talk therapy takes 15 years to accomplish. Wow, that's incredible. It's very powerful. Well, we hope more people will take the time to learn about the Equus Ranch and all Thank that you. you do. EquusRescue.org, yes. correct? Yes. EquusRescue.org. Yes, be a part of it. Maybe you can volunteer. Maybe there's something you can donate um, to be able to help these horses live the life that they're supposed to and not yes. just be taken off to somewhere. Absolutely. That's just inhumane. <laughs> Absolutely. So, if you are looking for your mission in life or your calling, your purpose, are you feeling dead inside? If you feel the need to give back, reach out to us. Um, it's Equus with two U's, EQUUSRescue.org. Um, you can send a message, uh, you can call me, my phone number's on there, it'll reach me directly, you may text me, email me, we'll get right back with you. We oh, need you. I we love need, that. We need donors, we need volunteers to clean stalls, we need the support of those horses so our mission com can continue. We're so thankful yes. for your passion and we can hear it and see it and feel yeah, it, that's absolutely. for sure. So Margo, you such a pleasure. Thank Margo you. Sutter with EquusRescue.org. Check it out for yourself. We found out about, we fell in love with it and we can't wait to learn more ourselves. Can't so wait thank for you to you. come over. Yes, thank you absolutely. so, so thank much, you. you guys. Really appreciate it. Oh, wonderful. What a great show today on In Your City Show, all about thankful is our thankful issue for Clayton Chesterfield and St. Charles County City Lifestyle Magazines. You know, you don't realize until you're sitting down with these people, and we just had a few of the people within our cities that are giving back and, and donating their time and uh, giving up a, a lot of their life to support these organizations. And, you know, we, we go home and we fix our dinner, we fix our lunch and we get to go to our job or see our kids and whatever it is. And there's so many people, including animals that are suffering out there. And it's people like who we've had on the show that make a difference in women and men's lives or helping them to get jobs or helping to put food and clothes into their home, giving them education, helping horses that, you know, would be taken to the slaughter farm. You just don't realize everything that's out there that needs support and help and people are giving their time. You know, as we had the show today, as we were wrapping up on our last segment, I was sitting here thinking about everyone that we've had on the show today is all about service to others. Yeah. Helping, serving, adding value, we met saving, two little boys that people. are Make-A-Wish kids yeah. that are spending it's... most of their lives in and out of hospitals, you know, to survive their illness. And then you've got Make-A-Wish. I mean, it's just, we meet so many people and you don't realize how many people are impacting other people's lives and changing them and, and f for for free, for volunteering. They're, they're doing this for nothing because it resonates in their heart. You know, they're Thank so passionate. Thank God for that. Yeah. You know, oh my goodness. I yeah. mean, just... 
Absolutely. So we really encourage you to find the organization that you want to support and be able to give back and, and fill your life with that gratitude. And if you're interested in being a part of In Your City Show, you can go to inyourcityshow.com. Uh, give us a, uh, an email. Tell us why you'd like to be a hot list guest. Or maybe you know somebody that uh, would make a great guest. Maybe you have a great story you'd like to share in our magazines. Maybe you're a business that needs advertising. We reach 40,000 homes. We reach an audience of 300,000 people that we can share your message to each month with a new theme. So we just want to say thank you, that we are thankful for you, and we are thankful for those people that are out there outreaching into the community making to a make difference. a difference. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. So as we approach the holiday season and prepare to gather with our loved ones, let us remember the essence of Thanksgiving. And may we take a moment to ponder what truly, it, you know, um, uh, is it, the, the meaning and pause to reflect upon the blessings that grace our lives. And we are wishing you and your family an abundance of blessings and happy Thanksgiving to you. Thanks for joining us for the November Thankful Gratitude Issue show and um, here at In Your City Show. If you want more information, go to inyourcityshow.com. Thank you. Mm -hmm.